Hello. There has been a lot of talk lately about the Marriage Amendment, or same-sex marriage rights. We even had the amendment on our ballot here last year in Minnesota. I try not to be one to take a particular side immediately without giving it some thought or giving serious consideration to the other side. That being said, I decided I would listen to each side and craft my feelings and opinions accordingly. The reason I am sharing this is because, as I understand the issue and what is being said on each side, I truly feel like neither side got it right. I don't think either side is proposing an equal, fair, and compassionate solution. I have thought about this a lot, and it bothered me that I never heard anyone coming to the same conclusions I was coming to. Eventually, as I cautiously began to share my views on the topic, I began to get some very positive feedback. Some of the comments I have heard have been, that makes so much sense, or I have never heard anyone talk about that as a solution, and the comment that has me making this video, you really need to get your message out on YouTube so everyone can hear it, because more people need to hear what you have to say. And so, here I am. The one thing that struck me as quite unusual as I listened to each side was that neither side seemed to counter or contradict the other. The people who were against same-sex marriage seemed to usually draw from the church, religion, God, and the Bible as their foundation for their stance against same-sex marriage. Those who support same-sex marriage usually argued fairness and equality in taxation, health and medical benefits, hospital visitation rights, inheritance, and things of that nature. Things provided by the state. What struck me as very odd was that neither side seemed to actually oppose the arguments of the other. I never heard the people against same-sex marriage say that they didn't want same-sex couples to have the same tax breaks as a married couple gets. I never heard them say they didn't want same-sex partners to be covered under their partner's insurance plan. I never heard them dispute hospital visitation rights or inheritance or any of the other issues that the same-sex marriage side was trying to achieve. I never heard the same-sex marriage side take issue with the church, religion, God, or the Bible. They didn't seem to have any comment on what their opposition was saying. Neither side did. It was very interesting and eventually confusing, listening very carefully to hear what each side was trying to protect and accomplish. I never heard either side talk about what the other side was saying. I began to wonder if they were even having the same argument at times. If not for each side using the phrase gay marriage, you might guess that they weren't even opposing each other at all. When I listened to the side opposed to the same-sex marriage, everything they spoke of usually referred to God or religion in some manner. When I listened to the same-sex marriage side, they usually spoke of legalities and rights. After listening to them both, it became clear that one side was arguing church, while the other side was arguing state. While I don't think it's in the Declaration of Independence or the Constitution, I believe the Founding Fathers supported a separation of church and state. We don't have a church of the state, such as the Church of England. There is no Church of the United States of America. We hold a freedom of religion as a value. The real issue seems to lie in the fact that this is one area where we have not clearly established a separation of church and state. A marriage was pretty much considered a marriage regardless of whether it was a religious ceremony or a function of the state. Historically, we've never really needed this separation. It was always kind of a one-size-fits-all kind of thing, as it were. And that is no longer the case. And it is on us as a people to come to a fair and equitable solution.
We are all citizens and deserve respect and dignity. We all deserve love and the opportunity to love freely. We all deserve to be heard. We all deserve equality. That is what our great nation is about. A freedom to be. So, what is the solution? For starters, one of the major issues for the side opposing same-sex marriage is the definition of marriage. One of the oldest definitions of marriage does come straight from the Bible. Granted, there are many different religions in this country, and I am in no way suggesting that I am an expert in any of them. <clears throat> for demonstration purposes, I will use the Roman Catholic Church in my examples. <clears throat> I think the point translates across the various religions. Since it is easy to understand and agree to the fact that the Bible existed before our country, I believe we should leave marriage and its definition in the realm of religion or the church. <clears throat> the Bible defined it long before we created any laws in this nation. In religion, whether anyone personally agrees with any particular belief or not, religion is required to do what it believes is best in the eyes of God. Religion must answer to the needs of God, not the people. And remember, people are fallible and may not completely understand the needs of God. They're acting within their own understandings of God. If the United States were to legalize same-sex marriage, the Roman Catholic Church would not have to acknowledge it. They would not have to perform those ceremonies. The hierarchy of the Roman Catholic Church isn't even in America. It's in Rome. Our country's laws do not govern the beliefs of people in other parts of the world. Our government cannot dictate to the church. In essence, our government does not and cannot legislate religious beliefs especially in a religion that's not even based in our country. This is about taking marriage completely out of the realm of the state and putting it in the realm of the church. As such, each individual religion or church would have to determine its own particular stance on same-sex marriage. The state would simply have no say in it. So does this mean that same-sex couples shouldn't or can't get married? Well, yes and no. They can't get married in the church, and there would be no marriage of the state. So, no, they couldn't get married. This also means that opposite-sex couples who were not involved in a church or hold no particular religious beliefs couldn't get married by the state either. It simply wouldn't exist. Where the church is accountable and answers to God, our country is a country by, of, and for the people. And as such, our government has a responsibility to meet the needs of the people. The needs of the people in this case would be some sort of legal union as defined by our government, and not a marriage as defined by the church or religion. I believe the correct term is civil union. This would be akin to the former marriage of the state, but it is not a marriage as defined by the church. The church would get to keep that word in its definition. It's all theirs. This allows us, the people, to determine how we, as a people, want to define a civil union. And we should start from scratch and really define it and all of its nuances and possible manifestations. Man and woman man and man, woman and woman, monogamy, polygamy, man and multiple women, woman and multiple men, multiple men and women. We now get to decide as a society what works for us and what's acceptable. And these things must all be considered. We are creating who we are and who we will be as a people. Age must be considered, too. If we're going to come up with our own definition for the civil union, 
I would suspect that NAMBLA, the North American Man-Boy Love Association, would like to have their voice heard. This brings us into brand new territory. How are we going to define who we are as a people? Do we limit civil unions only to citizens who are legal adults? These are the kind of things we get to and need to define. These decisions will tell future generations who we are as a people. Do we want to be known as hateful, fearful, close-minded, and small? Do we want to be seen as compassionate, caring, understanding, fair, and equal? We can now choose how we want to be and how we want to be remembered. We get to choose. Another thing to consider is that if we were to separate church and state in this way, going forward, anyone who got married, by definition, in a church, would not be considered to be in a civil union. They would still be taxed as single individuals. They would not have hospital visitation rights or inheritance rights, or any other right that is currently denied to same-sex couples. To resolve this, they would have to have a civil union as well as their marriage ceremony. If they want the benefits provided by the state, they must go through the process that the state has established, and the state would no longer be involved with marriage. Marriages would be purely and solely religious ceremonies and would not be recognized by the state. This might go against the grain of some of the people who oppose same-sex marriage. They may feel that it is not necessary for them to have to get married twice. They wouldn't be getting married twice. They would be getting married once by the church, and then they'd be getting their civil union from the state. Again, this puts marriage and its definition solely in the realm of the church. Based on their arguments of God, religion, and the Bible, it seems like this is exactly what they want. The church serves God, and the state serves the people. So this brings up the question about all the people who are only married by the church and have never had a civil union of the state. Well, there are a couple ways to handle this, and again, we could decide as a people how we want to address it. We could say that any couple who was married by the church before the law passed is grandfathered in as also having a civil union. End of story. We could also say that anyone who has been married more than 10 years before the law is passed is grandfathered in, but anyone married less than 10 years will have up to 10 years to get their civil union or their civil union status will be reverted to single again. This does benefit the state from increased revenue, but this is not about increasing revenue for the state. This is about creating the distinct separation of church and state in regards to marriage and civil unions. And this has not yet occurred. This is about being fair and compassionate towards all people. If same-sex couples wanted to get married in the church, it's no longer a legal matter. They would have to take it up with their church. Churches would not be sued for discriminating against same-sex couples for not allowing them to get married. This is about their beliefs. We do not legislate or sue people for their beliefs. You're free to believe whatever you choose to believe. If same-sex couples want their churches to change, they must do it from the inside and within the confines and constructs of the church. They're also free to choose to leave that, ch that church. The choice remains theirs, and it's not a legal issue. The unfortunate part of this is that it does not provide a quick fix. It will take us a while as a people to get this all mapped out and come to some sort of consensus. The good thing is, we have an opportunity to do it right the first time and not have to go back and fix our mistakes. 
we need to take the time necessary to do this right and it starts with conversations and listening not arguments it begins with caring and compassion we really get to choose do we want to have this as an opportunity for conflict or creation we get to choose I hope this is the beginning of conversation in our country a conversation that I think we need to have notice that I'm not saying argument if you agree with what I am saying please pass this message and video along to your friends and family let's start being conscious and intentional in our actions let this be where we set the stage for how America can truly be a place where dreams really can come true and anything is possible when we are all working together for the good of the people all of the people I'm choosing to make my voice heard how do you choose to make yours heard?